I'm going to show you how to create a configurable timer in After Effects. You'll be able to configure the start time and the display format with simple sliders. We're going to be using some simple scripting and the essential graphics features. I have tutorials on both of those, so if you want to go and recap, I'll put links in the description. Let's jump in. Okay, so I've created a new composition here, and now we want to add a solid for the background. So I'm going to click down in our layers panel and press Control Y, and let's call this layer BG for background. And I'm going to set the color to one of my brand colors. Now we're going to create a text element using this uh, type tool up here, or Control T, and let's click. And let's type out 00 colon 00, which is a kind of standard timer format. Let's set it to the center using the Align tab. I'm going to press Control and double click Pan Behind, which will center the anchor point in the, in the middle of the text. And then I'm going to press S on our layer here to bring up the scale and then scale it up. Try and make sure that the font you're using is a monospace font. So what that means is that every character is the same width. This will stop your timer kind of jumping around as it counts down. I'm using a font called Courier. To begin, we need to go to the source text property of our text element here. Hold Alt and click the stopwatch. And this is where we write our expression. Okay, so first we need a variable to store our start time in. If you want to understand expressions in more detail, I recommend going and checking out my video on expressions. Otherwise, I'll try and explain it clearly here. So we might want our timer to start from 50 seconds or 20 minutes. So I'm going to create a variable called start time and set it equal to 50. Okay, now to work out the current time of the timer as it's counting down, we're going to create a variable called current time. And we're going to set it equal to our start time variable minus time. And I cover the time in my expressions video. It's basically just a inbuilt variable which gets larger as you play your animation. So now if we click off, we can see we have this very rough looking number going down. So we need to tidy this up. So right now that is just a number. We need to convert it to, a, to look like a time code. The extend script language, which is what we're writing in right now, provides a function to do that. That function is called time to time code. So it does exactly what it sounds like. It converts your time to a time code. So let's create a new variable called formatted time and set it equal to time to time code. And inside these parentheses, let's put our current time. Now let's click off and look, now it's in a timecode format. But as you've probably noticed, there's way too many zeros. We've got the hours, the minutes, the seconds, and the milliseconds here. And you might not want to show all of that in your timer, but we want to enable complete flexibility. So we're going to create two variables called start and end, where we will specify the character we want to start at and the character we want to end at. If that's confusing, just, just wait, you'll understand. So let's create a variable called start and set it to zero for now. And remember, we learned in our expressions video that we end all our lines with a semicolon. And let's create an end variable, which we will set to six for now. So now we want to say, only show us the characters of that time code between our start and end values. So if our start and end were zero and six, we would only show from the zeroth character to the sixth character. So to do that, we need to use a function called substring which is what it sounds. A string is just a sequence of characters, which is what we've got here. And a substring is saying, take a sort of subsection of that string between the start and end values that we specify. So let's create a, another variable called new time equals formatted time dot substring. And then in our parentheses here, we will specify our start and end times. So let's type start comma, and semicolon. Now let's click off. And here, we haven't got it quite right. We need to change our end variable to five, not six. And now, there we go. Beautiful. So this is showing the hours and the minutes. Because our start time is under a minute, we're not seeing anything right now. So if we up our start time to something above a minute, 
in seconds, so 70, 70 seconds we should see. There we go, there's a one there for the minutes. But we can't see our seconds right now. To see our seconds, we'd have to change our end value to something larger. Let's try eight. There we go. Now we can see our seconds and our minutes and our hours. Okay, so we can configure these start and end variables in the script, but it's not very user-friendly. We wanna be able to control them in a more user-friendly way. So to do that, we're going to create a new layer and create a null object. And we're gonna rename this to timer controls. And we're gonna to go to effect expression controls and we're gonna add a slider control. Press E to bring up the slider control. Let's right click and rename this to start time. And we're gonna use this slider to control our start time. So let's come back to our expression here and where we've got 70, we're gonna highlight it. And we're gonna use the expression pick whip to drag to this slider. And here it's added a line of code which basically says start time rather than now equaling whatever we type in it's going to equal whatever this slider is which right now is zero so if we increase it we can see we can control the start time using this slider okay that's great but you'll notice when it goes below zero it screws up and the reason why is because it's adding a minus at the start and now our start and end values are wrong because the zeroth value is no longer this digit it's this minus symbol so we need to add something to the script which says when the value reaches zero, just keep it at zero, okay? So let's type a line below current time. And let's say if current time is less than zero and then open and close brackets. And then let's type in here, current time equals zero and then semicolon. And now when it reaches zero, it simply stays there. So now let's click back on our timer controls, go back to effect, expression controls, slider control, rename it to start digit. Click it and press control D to duplicate it. And let's rename this one to end digit. Now, twirl down our start digit. Let's go back to our expression here and let's highlight the value we set for our start digit and use our expression pick whip to parent it to the start digit slider. And do the same for our end variable with the end digit slider. Now, if we increase our end digit slider, you can see it is changing the format of our timer. I wanna see the minutes and the seconds only, so we'll increase the start digit to get rid of the hours. And we've got three and eight as our indexes there. So we could stop here or we can make even more user friendly by integrating the essential graphics features of After Effects. So let's go to Window, Essential Graphics. Here we've selected my timer from the dropdown, which is the name of my composition. Let's open our timer controls and let's drag in our start time slider, our start digit slider and our end digit slider. And let's name them here, timer start, start digit and end digit. Okay, now I'm in a new composition and I'm going to drag our timer composition in here and I'm gonna twirl it down here. And you can see here, there's this essential properties. Now we can see those three properties that we added and we can tweak them like this. Change the start and end digits to format the timer exactly how we want. So if we just wanted milliseconds, we could do this. That's, that'll just show us the milliseconds. We just wanted seconds, we can do this. If we wanted seconds and milliseconds, we can do this. So you can format it exactly how you want. So that is how to create a configurable timer in After Effects using expressions and the essential graphics features. Before we end, I have set up a Patreon where people can support my work and at the same time, get access to exclusive project files and asset packs, discount codes on some great plugins and more. I have also set up a Discord server for animators and designers to chat about everything animation and get feedback on their work from other motion junkies. Come be a part of this new community. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, like the video and hit the bell for notifications of new uploads. And as always, see you on the flippity flop.